Hi, today we're looking at how you get small birds to pose for you. Now you might have some garden feeders where you've got your peanuts and your suet balls and your um, sunflower hearts and the birds are coming into those feeders on a regular basis. How do you get them to pose for you? That's what we're going to look at. Now the first thing you could do is find yourself a nice perch. Well I was quite taken with this silver birch log with this bit of fungi growing on the end of it. I thought that looks quite photogenic. Now normally I like my birds on very thin branches, but I quite fancy them on a bit of fungi. So that's what we're going to do today. So I like to work on a table because then you're up in the air, you're far more comfortable. The hide is just behind the camera, it's a permanent wooden hide. The next thing you want, you've got your perch, now you want your background. And your background wants to be at least 10 metres away, so it's out of focus. And ideally just an area of lawn or a hedgerow or something, a nice smooth area. There's your first two elements. Next thing you want is the right lighting. You know, you can spend a fortune on cameras and camera lenses, but if you don't have the appropriate light for the subject, you're still not going to get nice pictures. Today is going to be a mixture. There's going to be blue sky coming across later on. I'm going to get shots in the sunlight. I don't really want that. I really want cloudy, bright conditions. I'm going to be doing blue tits and great tits. Both of them have this pale yellow breast and white cheeks and both of those areas can burn out very readily when you're photographing in strong sunlight. It's much better to do birds like that in a softer overcast light. I'll probably end up doing both in the sunlight and um, in, in overcast conditions, so I'll show you the difference later on. But how are we going to get the birds landing on here? Well, first of all, I bring one of the feeders closer. This is my sunflower heart feeder. And then I'm going to get some more sunflower hearts and just scatter them into the into this little bit of fungi and then we're going to sit in the hide and just wait and watch the birds and they're going to pick up on that fairly quickly they're going to start landing there but your photographs initially are going to be very poor because those tits are just going to land there grab the sunflower heart and fly off and they'll pick it up and it'll be in the bill and that will ruin the picture so the answer to photographing them is less is more. You'll start to get the pictures when that supply of sunflower hearts runs out. When you get down to the last two or three pieces, that's when the birds will pose. It's very noticeable. They'll start to land there and I look around to see where's the sunflower hearts and it will be in that couple of seconds that you'll have the chance to get your pictures. So what I tend to do now, I'm just going to sit in the hide and wait until they're landing on a regular basis here and that might take an hour they're landing here on a regular basis and then i wait till the food's all gone and then from then on we just top it up with small amounts of food now these next four shots are all taken in that soft overcast light which i much prefer but they've all got sunflower hearts in the bill and that really spoils it but it's the most likely picture you're going to get when they're coming in very fast and they're just grabbing something and flying off straight away. We've got the birds coming in on a regular basis. They're landing here, but they're not posing for us. They're just too quick. But all that food is now gone. And I did notice towards the end of it, they started to pose a little bit because there wasn't much food there. So now we're going to top it up, but only with three sunflower hearts. We're going to be really stingy. We hide these around the back here. The birds can see them, but they'll be much slower when they come in to feed. And then the final thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the last feeder. We'd already taken the bulk of the feeders away. We just left ourselves with one. Now we're going to have none. Now at the moment we've got the right light conditions. It's cloudy overcast, but it's getting brighter and the sun is shining occasionally. And as the day goes on, from the forecast, I suspect it's going to get too sunny. And when it does, I'll give up. I'll go and do something else. I really want cloudy bright. I'm using the Sony A1 with the 200 to 600. My ISO setting is 1600. And I don't need to go any slower than that. 
I don't see any improvement if I go slower than 1600 so I'm very happy with the noise levels at 1600 and I'm very happy to go faster than 1600 just don't feel the need to go slower so that's my default setting I'm shooting wide open with this lens most of the time because it's not uh, a wide aperture the 200 to 600 zoom is there's enough depth of field with it to do birds like great tits and blue tits so I'm tending to shoot wide open and I don't need a fast shutter speed a thousandth of a second is more than adequate to capture great tits and blue tits standing there if you're doing birds in flight you want a much, much faster shutter speed let's say 2500th of a second is a good starting point for these birds in flight but when they're standing there I'd even get a sharp picture at 250th of a second but typically when it's cloudy bright I'm getting about a thousandth of a second and when the sun comes out I'm getting a faster shutter speed but I, the light just becomes too contrasty. But now with hardly any food hidden amongst that fungi the birds tend to pose. Basically they're looking where's the food gone? The sun's shining a bit too strongly there I've just managed to hold on to the detail in the white cheeks, but it's better with that softer light that we've got for this picture. But you'll get more pictures in the two or three minutes after the food supply has run out, or almost run out, than you will in two or three hours of sitting there when there's lots of food. When it comes to food and getting birds to pose, less is more. Nuthatches can normally be very difficult birds to get to pose. They're very direct in their actions. They go straight to the food source, grab it and fly off. But here, the lack of food has caused him to slow down. The wren wasn't interested in sunflower seeds. That was just a lucky bonus. Well, that went quite well. So now we're going to try them on a, another bit of fungi. Still silver birch, it always makes a nice prop silver birch. And if you can find one with a bit of bracket fungi on it like that, that makes a very nice prop for the birds to land. It's not easy to find things like this and you do spend a lot of time walking about in the woods trying to find nice perches. I mean this can go on for days and days and the log has got to be small enough to be able to carry to where you want to be. And um, Oh, the other thing you do is saw the bottom off so it's a, a flat bottom you don't want it broken like this because it won't stand upright if you saw the bottom off and it's very easy to saw silver birch it's a very soft wood it tends to stand up by itself so we're going to do exactly the same we've got our sunflower hearts which i think is the most popular source of food for birds and we'll just put some sunflower hearts here we get the birds coming to this bit of bracket fungi on a regular basis and once they are we do exactly the same as before we reduce the number of sunflower hearts we take that one away and the birds will be so used to landing on here at that point they're going to come here and say hey where's the food it's all about putting less food out when you're ready to photograph and you'll get all your best pictures in probably less than a minute because the birds will be landing and posing so well so this hide has this wonderful clear view netting which you can buy off eBay and it's got this great advantage from the inside it's very transparent you can see what's going on around you from the outside the birds can't see in as long as it's dark inside the hide it's like looking through one-way glass you can see out but the birds can't see in as before I start off with a few pictures when there was plenty of food there just illustrating what you don't want but then when the food's removed or just a couple of pieces hidden behind that fungi now we start to get the shots the sun at this point is quite strong it's gone a bit softer there
and I caught it on a different piece of fungi which was actually my favourite piece and also the background here is a reed bed. So that's a blue tit and thanks for watching. <laughs>